<laughs> Hello, and thank you for all of your submissions. From your submissions, I've learned that all jobs fall into two basic categories. Working for someone else, sometimes called pretending to work, or or working hard enough just not to get fired. The other category of job is simply known as self-employed, or sometimes called if I don't work, I don't eat. Today, we're gonna focus on getting hired by someone else. Welcome to the gradual report, where we gradually Report. The first thing you need to do in applying for a job is put together a resume or a circular vitae. This one page description allows your employer to view all of your special abilities and evaluate you against other people in deciding which one of the thousands of you he will waste 45 minutes interviewing. I've posted my resume in the link in the sidebar so that you can get an idea on what one's supposed to look like. Feel free to borrow any of the appropriate parts. The first thing you need to understand is what employers are looking for. They're looking for a balance between education and work experience in a related field, be it dishwashing, pet chick bunk collecting, being a massage therapist or acupuncturist. Don't worry, both education and experience can be faked. Did you know, of the applicants applying for a job at Merrill Lynch, a banking institution in 1992, 35% claimed they had attended Harvard, when in actuality, only 2% had attended Harvard. I just made that up. But you believed me, because I used dates and percentage points. That brings us to our first point. In your resume, use dates and percentage points. I graduated in 1992 in the top 3% of my class. Who cares if it's true or not? And the machinations your employer is going to have to go through to verify that you've lied are the types of machinations that are only going to come out in the discovery process of your criminal negligence trial. But you're gonna be long gone before then anyway, so I wouldn't worry about it. Next is the experience bit. This is gonna be a little harder to fake. You're gonna have to write out a script for one of your friends to read when your prospective employer calls them thinking, <laughs> thinking, that they are your previous employer. Hello, Oregon General Nuclear Testing Facility. This is Barbara, how can I help you? Aha. Uh -huh. Okay, hold on one moment, please. Hello, this is Alan at the Human Resources Department. How can I be of assistance? Aha, uh -huh. aha. Uh -huh. I'm looking at his uh, safety report right now. Aha, uh -huh. he's performed above satisfactory in all of his reviews. Aha. Uh -huh. Aha. Uh -huh. Be sure to include the catch-all sentence for the unlikely but possible eventuality that they're going to ask your friend a question that isn't going to be on the script. I'm sorry, we don't release that information over the phone. If you'd like to submit your request in writing with a $15 processing fee, I'm sure we'd be able to get that report out to you. Then all you gotta do is write up a silly little report and make sure it's stamped and has a letterhead. But you're getting $15, so... Summation. Remember, resumes are impossible to verify and easy to fake, so you can pretty much write whatever you think they want to hear. I usually just copy down the job description, add a little bit of education and a few more years of experience than they're asking for, and cha cha Interview request granted. As far as keeping the job, show up on time, smile, and do what you love doing. Hopefully, it's what they're paying you for. Mwah.